Good morning, New Covenant. How's everyone this morning? You ready to worship him? Let's come on, let's just stand to our feet. See what he has in store for us today. Let's just focus on him. Try to forget everyone that's around. Just worship him like nobody's watching this morning. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me And mine's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough But you came along And put me back together Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, oh there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I know it's true I'm not afraid To show you my weakness My failures and flaws Lord, you've seen them all And you still call me friend Oh, the God of the mountain He's still God in the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Oh, there's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Turn your grave, let's sing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn my grave you turn graves into garden you turn bones into army you turn seas into harvest you're the say better than you Lord there's nothing nothing is better than you
thank you today God we thank you for your presence in this place we thank you that we know that you are madly in love with us and we don't have to be afraid others without on the outside of a relationship with you they might have cause to be afraid, but we don't have to be afraid today. We just thank you for your promises. Thank you for your presence in here today. God, I pray that this song will build faith and hope in our life today. In Jesus' name. Come on, church, we invite you to stand once again.
sing Jesus. Jesus, our redemption and our salvation is in His blood. Yes, it is. My friend forever, his kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this world. that you have peace today that hope will rise inside you this morning as we sing these words let's lift our praise let the walls fall down in your life this morning let's sing <clears throat> swing wide all you heavens let the praise go up as the walls come down all creation Everything with breath and repeat the sound All his children Clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God His name is Jesus Come on, let me sing Sweet wine on your bed this morning you're worthy you're worthy God once again we thank you we thank you we feel your love this morning we feel your provision this morning we feel your strength in this room your hope your peace God I pray that it would follow us home and everywhere we go people would experience it 
God, that they would look into our lives and look into our hearts and say, what is different about you? And we can share the good news with those around us. God, I pray that as the word is brought forth this morning, that you'd help open our hearts, open our minds to receive it. Let it get deep down inside us and change our hearts forever. In Jesus' name, and all the church said, amen. You may be seated. Good morning, you covenant family. I'm Ronnie Scott. I have an announcement. I'm going to read it so I don't forget anything. As many of you know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. At New Covenant, we are extremely fortunate to have Pastor Josh Daywalk leading our church, as well as our great pastoral staff. The church will follow its tradition of awarding the pastor and staff with a monetary gift. The board wanted to make you aware of October being Pastor Appreciation Month in case some of you would like to send a card or show your appreciation in some way to Pastor Josh, Jonathan Wilkerson, Kaylee Wilkerson, and Erica LaRue. In Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul encouraged us to respect those who work hard among you, hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Together in faith, let's expect God to continue showing His favor upon the ministry of New Covenant Church. Thank you. Hey church family, um, literally sitting here trying to make this perfect. This is the sixth time I've started this. I know I'm going to jump out of the gate with just the honesty this morning. Um, but I'm really glad you're joining us. Um, sitting in my living room, doing something for the very first time, recording a sermon from my house. And so hopefully this will feel more homey today. I won't keep you as long and you're like yeah right he says that a lot at church um i won't keep you as long i promise i know being at home is tough um laundry dishes it's a day of rest don't do any of it it'll be there tomorrow just wait and don't do it today um but this week obviously we had to move everything online and i began to think back to june the 7th when we were able to meet in person for the first time after shutting down the first time and uh, literally thought that having to shut down again or having to miss one or two Sundays just to be safe and to be cautious would be the worst thing that could happen. And then I was like, there's a lot more worse things that can happen than that. And so we are going to make the best of this, and we're going to let God use it today. But one thing that, that I, I always hear, I hear two, I hear two things about this, this whole year, and people you talk to people about COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, and two things come up. Number one, people always have a time. If they haven't had it, like officially, they haven't gone and gotten tested, got a positive test, they always have a date dating back to like December, January, February, like, oh yeah, I've already had it. I know I've already had it. If I went and got a blood test, I would have antibodies because I was so sick for like five weeks back in December. No, without a doubt, I've had it. The other thing that the conversation that always comes up with this is people say, I, I don't know anybody that's had it. You know, I, I know it's out there. I know it's a, a thing and I just have no idea. I have no, I, I don't know anybody. Well, our family can't say that any longer. Um, Keisha, her grandma, uh, Mary Alice Bruce, uh, we call her Nanny. And Nanny is a, such a special person, and she is 94. Nanny has an iPhone. She will text us. She likes to call us. Um, she FaceTimes us, and she has Instagram. Um, she loves Instagram. She likes her, her photos. I think she's probably a little bit addicted to Instagram. She's 94, so uh, she can do whatever she wants. And uh, so those of you out there that you feel tech, technologically challenged and you're like 70 or 60 or even 50, you have no excuse. Nanny's 94, so you know get up with the times. Um, but she started feeling bad several weeks ago, and we got a call that, that she wasn't doing well. And so they, they took her and, and um, finally got tested, and she did end, end up having um, COVID-19. And so we navigated that, um, prayed for her, and many of you prayed for her, and she's doing great now. And so it, it does, it is funny when it does hit close to home. And so today I want to do something a little bit different and not keep you quite as long, but also share something from my heart that um, might seem odd to you, but 
I'll start it like this. Uh, my professor in college, her name was Mildred Williams. She was the uh, one of the counseling professors, uh, psychology professors at Southern Wesleyan, and I had introduction to counseling with her my senior year. Not going to lie, and this is no uh, disrespect to my religion professors, but it was literally the best ministry class I had, and it wasn't even my department. And one day she stood up in front of our class and she said, every counselor needs a counselor. And at first, it didn't really, it didn't really make sense. Um, but then she started to explain it, and she was like, every single day, I sit and listen to people and their problems, and I, I help them with their relationships, and I encourage them, and I listen to them, and I challenge them. And she said, like, after listening to that for hours on end, every single day, I need to go get counseling. And so she said, every counselor needs a counselor. Then she said, and for you in this room, for those of you in this room studying to be pastors, every pastor needs a pastor. And that has not been more true for me than this year. And this month is Pastor Appreciation Month. And so I just want to take just a few minutes and share with you some of those pastors in my life that make just a huge difference and make an impact on me and encourage me and are there for me. So I'll, I'll start with um, uh, my, one of my family members, Pastor Dustin Wilson. Um, he doesn't know that that I would say that about him, but he literally is one of those people that he can relate to me and he has, deals with it and goes through it. And he always challenges me with, with questions about scripture and, and theology. And we have those conversations or I'll text him a question or we'll, we'll go back and forth about something we're dealing with at our church. And, and, uh, you know, he's just a, a voice in my life that, um, it challenges me to think and challenges me to process things that maybe I wouldn't um, in other situations. Another one for for me is Pastor Andy Stanley. He has no idea who I am. I probably never see this message, but I appreciate him. I appreciate him because he makes the Bible come to life for me. He preaches Scripture and teaches Scripture in a way that literally helps me want to read more of it. And it makes me just want to dive in and, and understand it. And it, it, it makes it exciting um, for me. Another thing that, that Andy Stanley, uh, the way I appreciate him, and, and I'm not going to lie to you, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not as good as you guys maybe think I am, I promise. Uh, I steal stuff all the time from him and from other pastors and leaders and books that I read. And one of the things I've stolen from him is he always says, are we here to make a point? Are we here to make a difference? And I think this year there can be no better time to ask that question. And he's also the one that says, if someone would predict their own death and resurrection and then actually pull it off, we should go with whatever they say. And that's what Jesus did. And so I appreciate him for that. Another one that I listen to often and, and try to learn from and gain insight and wisdom from is um, Pastor Kevin Myers. Pastor Kevin Myers is the pastor of 12 Stone Church down in Georgia, and he preached a message a couple of weeks ago that a lot of people probably were caught off guard by, and he shared it with his church. He was sharing his heart with his church. But I ended up watching this message, and he said to his church, and he said, I am not your politician, I'm your pastor. And he said, during the times in which we live, we are bringing cultural hostility and disunity into a place where Christ has called for unity. And like that's one of those statements, like you better write it down or it hits you right between the eyes, it's, it hits you in the chest, and you're like, man, that is, that is tough. But he couldn't be more right, and it challenged me to honestly start to think about how I can continue to shepherd and lead you. Um, obviously, you know who I am. I, I struggle with being a people pleaser, and I want to make you happy. I want I don't want anybody to be upset about anything. And at the end of the day, I'm going to answer for everything that I did, everything that we did, and it, Pastor Kevin Myers just reminds me that there's so many moments that we can let take us and move us in the direction that the world would want us to go. But then 
he always brings me back to this point of saying like, man, God's called me to do something. And it just encourages me. Another one of those uh, people that I truly appreciate as my pa- one of my pastors is Pastor Matt Smith at Vintage Church in Randleman. Uh, Matt's obviously my brother-in-law as well. Um, but Matt is um, Matt's the person that I can text at any moment and be um, frustrated and be discouraged and uh, man just be be myself in a way that I would need to not be that way in certain situations to protect you or to protect me, to help me understand and, and help lead you through something, but then someone has to lead me through it. And uh, and so Matt, to me, is that person that, man, I can I can text him and sometimes he'll, he'll say, man, I've been there. I know what you're going through. I know what you're dealing with. I've, I've, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Or he'll He'll say, "Man, you got to keep your head up. You got to you got to push through this. You got to pray, you got to seek and um man, he's one, he's just one of those people in my life that that truly um has been my pastor and helps lead me through things and 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 it's just amazing to have and it kind of goes back to this and and it's not just that every counselor needs a counselor, every pastor needs a pastor, but everybody needs somebody. And the, the, the last one I want to share with you and um, kind of lead you into where I want to finish our time together today is a gentleman named Pastor Kevin Queen. Um, pastor Kevin Queen is the pastor of Cross Point in Nashville, Tennessee. And he preached a message a few weeks back about the church. And in this message, he talked about that our life is fragile, our relationships are fragile, our culture is fragile, our um, politics <laughs> is fragile, um, literally everything earthly is fragile. And that has never been more true than it has been in 2020 for, for many of us. But he also said that the one thing that's not fragile is the church. The church is not fragile. He said that He quoted Matthew where Jesus said, who do people say that I am? And Peter spoke up and he said, they say that you're the Messiah, the son of the living God, you're Christ. And Jesus looked at him and said, on this rock, I will build my church. Not to say that he was going to build the church on Peter, but he was saying on this foundational statement, he's like on this Word that you've just spoken about me being the Christ, being the Messiah. I'm going to build my church around that. And a day like today, a week like this week, and you would you would look and and see, man, maybe maybe the church, you know, you're like, is it fragile? And man, I'll be honest, I sent an email to our board and our staff a, a couple of weeks ago, and I just kind of laid my heart out. I just said that, and there's been times this year where, you know. I was ready to throw in the towel, and and in in hindsight and in perspective, that was really frivolous of me to think that because of how truly blessed I am, how truly blessed we are as a church. Now we we've we've done more this year as a church financially and in helping people and in changes and in updates to our facility. We've done more this year than we have since I've been here almost eight years now. And we've, we're on, on track to have one of the best giving months that we've ever had, best giving years we've ever had. Now, Satan loves to creep in on that, and he likes to shout that lie in my face and say, well, you had to shut down, Josh, so we'll see how that turns out for you. But then I hear people say the church is not fragile like there's nothing that can stop the gospel message there's nothing that can stop jesus from building his church maybe he is changing things maybe maybe he is preparing us for something different and new and something that we had never dreamed possible but every pastor needs a pastor and those those people this year have have gotten me to a place of of hopefully just putting more faith and trust and hope in in Jesus and in what we're doing and how God has led us um but i know that this 
in navigating this year and and you know Keisha and I had felt I felt no different in the the stress of maybe work or church and kids and um she she forwarded me um uh, an email that she gets um this email group that she's a part of that sends a devotional to her and she forwarded it to me and uh the caption just said or the words that she put with it were were this this is this couldn't be at a better time and i want to i want to finish uh, our time together today with this and it comes from hebrews chapter 11 if you want to turn there with me um but hebrews chapter 11 we've gone through this chapter before when we've done our running with the giant series but hebrews chapter 11 is basically what many scholars and bible teachers call the hall of fame of faith and in this in this chapter it outlines all these people in scripture that were called to do something by God and they went and they did it and they were obedient but it also says that none of them got to witness the end result of what God had called them to and at face value how discouraging does that seem and that just seems man it just seems so like why God why why would you call these people to something so great and they were obedient and you never let them see it but at the end of and I want to I want to grab I want to read it to you at the, at the end of, of of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 39 it says these were all commended for their faith yet none of them received what had been promised since God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Every single one of them were commended for their faith, but they never got to witness it. But then it said it was f- so that we could be a part of the plan that God had all along. And now they are witnessing us run this race, the one that they helped bring to life because they were obedient but they never got to see it. But now, sitting in heaven, they're witnessing us run this race that we call life, watching these things come to life, watching this come to fruition, watching God's plan evolve and change and grow. And so, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't understand everything that God's doing. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have all the answers. And um, like I said, I think I said it last Sunday, but we're going to let each other down. Um, I'm going to lead imperfectly. You're going to live your life imperfectly. We're going to do things in a way that is is not in line with what we know is right or how we should be. But one thing it did say in here, um, and I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to read this, and he and, and we'll pray and we'll close up. But Matthew or Hebrews chapter twelve, verse fourteen, it says, "Make every effort to live in peace with everyone, and to be holy." Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Everybody needs somebody. And today, maybe this week, or maybe from now moving forward, you'll understand that. And you'll see that even I, the pastor, needs a pastor and it takes six. I don't know how many I listed, five or six. It takes that many. Um, but what about that person that you're dealing with or the family member you're dealing with? What if they're just waiting for somebody? What if they need somebody? And you're that person seeing to it that they don't miss out on grace, that they don't miss out on the message of Jesus and His power to change lives. And so... Um, and I just want to pray for us, and we'll close up. Um, and I, I want you, everyone, to know that we love you, and we, we care about you, and we're always here for you, no matter what. Um, and we're going to be online today, 
um, we may have to do it again, and it'll be all right. We're just going to have let God use this for His glory and to teach us something every step of the way. So let's pray together. God, we love you. We're so thankful for the time we've shared today and just the opportunity we have to listen to the gospel over a computer, over a TV. Lord, I'm thankful for those people in my life that, um, God, have just made such an impact and such an encouragement to me to navigate every part of what you have called me to do. God, I'm thankful for the people that you've put in my path that are from New Covenant that frequently send me a text or email saying, we love you, you're doing a great job, we encourage you, we, we're here for you, we're praying for you, praying for your family. Um, God, I pray that I never take those people for granted and the blessing and favor that we've seen and that we've shared. Um, God, would you give us perspective today? Would you give us the perspective that <laughs> literally there's so many other terrible things than having to um, be at church online together? And so I just pray for wisdom and discernment in the days ahead as we lead. Um, Lord, I pray for every single person that has listened to this today that, God, if they need somebody, then, Lord, they would reach out for help. If they have someone that they're dealing with, maybe they're the somebody for that person. So, God, we all need each other. I pray that we would live at peace, that no bitter roots would rise up. And just as, as Kevin Meyer said, Lord, too many times this year we have brought the hostility of our culture into the walls of the church, taking the place of Christ's unity in us and through us. And so, God, would you, re would you just restore that? Would you bring that back, God? Would you just help us to be unified behind this mission, behind this, this, this call on us to bring the gospel message, to bring hope and peace and healing to those around us? And God, I'm thankful today for our families. God, I'm thankful personally today for Keisha and all that she means to me. And God, just the way that she helps me navigate every season of life that we've faced together. And for our kids, for Addison and Jordan, for God, just the resilience they've shown through all this year, God, to make so many changes so quickly. And so, Lord, with that prayer, I pray for every single family, every kid, every parent, every student that's represented here. And God, that you would give them all the strength to walk through this. God, we love you. We thank you. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. As always, uh, we hope that uh, we'll see you next week, um, and we'll continue to update you this week, this, this coming week, as to um, God, where, we just, where we feel God's leading us. If you want the opportunity to give, um, you can do that on our website. And um, we're just so thankful for your generosity. We hope you have an amazing week, and we'll see you soon.